Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Well, hello and welcome to the Intuitive Transformations Radio Show, where you will find tools that you can use to change and transform your life every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Ohm Times Radio Network, the voice of consciousness at ohmtimes.com. This is Sylvia Henderson, your host, and if you would like to learn more about me and the healing work that I do, then please be sure to visit my website at intuitivetransformations.net. That's intuitive transformations with an S at the end, .net. And be sure to download my free 20-minute healing audio that will allow you to release fear, worry, and anxiety during times of uncertainty. So today is January 19th. 2017 and coming up this weekend this Saturday on January 21st will be an incredible event called the Million Women's March on Washington DC now in spite of the name this event is open to all genders it's open to anyone at all who desires to support and establish equality and equal rights for all in a peaceful and positive manner. If you'd like to participate but are unable to get to Washington, D.C., well, go to womensmarch.com and click on uh, the marches. There's a little tab at the top that says the marches to find a sister march that's located near you. There is literally a sister march in every single state in uh, the country. And there is also um, a long list of international sister marches that have been organized as well um, from around the world, beginning from Argentina and Australia, all the way to Tanzania and the United Kingdom. So again, go to womensmarch.com and find out how you can participate in spreading the message of equal rights for all around the world. So why is this happening and why is this such an important event? Well, it's important because now is the time for the divine feminine to fully awaken. We have lived in a world um, dominated mostly by the shadow aspects of masculine energies, um, which include energies of aggression and anger. And it's based on the outdated egoic ideology of survival of the fittest and me, myself, and I. And so this weekend, we are vibrationally and energetically raising our consciousness into the enlightened awareness that all is one and one is all, which is the truth. And this Women's March is just the beginning of a balancing process that will continue until the yin and the yang, the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies actually balance and work together in harmony as one. When we can do this, then we can heal our world and all of humanity together. Now, because change is always met with some form of opposition and resistance, I want to encourage each one of you to hold this event in the highest vibrational light of unconditional love that is possible so that all who participate are held in a protective bubble of golden light that and that divine guidance would be available and present for all of the organizers, that there would be a tremendous amount of angelic energy and presence at the main event in DC and at every single sister march that's being held around the world. I mean, if you just go to the website, it's astonishing to see how many countries are taking place in this show of, um, I don't wanna call it a show of force, but just really a show, a showing of presence how present we are really becoming across the world in terms of what is truly important. And so keep in mind that 
major changes occur when we come together as one from a heart-centered space and with the unified desire to create positive outcomes for ourselves and others. And that's what's happening around the planet. And it's going to continue to grow, folks. I'm really excited as we move forward in, uh, in through 2017 and onward. And so today, we're going to talk about how you can create manifested changes within your own personal lives with the help of the Akashic Records. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. And if not, our special guest will, will help me pronounce that because some people say Akashic, some people say Akashic, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. <laughs> if you're wondering what the Akashic Records are, well, you are going to find out in just a few moments. Uh, because joining us today is the woman who literally wrote the book, or should I say several books on the Akashic Records. Dr. Linda Howe is here with us today to share from her wealth of wisdom, her knowledge of the Akashic Records, what they are, why they are important, and how you can accept, access your own Akashic Records and heal the wounds of your soul. Dr. Linda Howe is an award-winning author. She's a teacher, a world-renowned leading expert in the field of Akashic studies. She was the first person to bring the Akashic records to the world community and make teachable access to the records available to anyone with a desire to learn, starting in 1996. She founded the Linda Howe Center for Akashic Studies in Chicago in 2001, teaching thousands of people globally. Linda's joy is focusing on the records as a spiritual resource for personal empowerment and transformation. She is especially excited to share the recent revision of her book, Healing Through the Akashic Records, now available in paperback. Her other books include Discover Your Soul's Path Through the Akashic Records and How to Read the Akashic Records. Dr. Linda Howe, welcome to the show. Well, Hi, Sylvia. Thank you so much. It's really, it's great to be here with you. And, um, you know, I when you were talking about this, this movement, right, the movement for change and growth and, you know, expressing itself in, in marches all over the world, I just thought how, you know, I can feel the light in you and, and the 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 open the openness and the hope and the excitement that we are really up to our eyeballs in in global transformation and it is a and you know what a great thing so thank you thank you thank you i just i you know it's very fulfilling just to hear you talk about it so and it is of oh. course my great pleasure to be with you today cuz we we have such a nice time together so thank we you. do. I, we do. You were on my show last year, and, and I just enjoyed every moment of that show. So I'm thrilled to have you back here, and I'm thrilled to be the <laughs> owner of uh, your brand new revised book, Healing Through the Akashic Records, Using the Power of Your Sacred Wounds to Discover Your Soul's Perfection. So, Linda, okay. there are people, believe it or not, who may not be familiar with the Akashic Records that are listening to my show. I know that many are um, who listen to my show, but can you please explain to those who have never heard of the Akashic Records? First of all, am I saying it per correctly? Is it a case? Yes, yes, yes. I know, isn't okay. it? That's always the question. It's just like, well, you know, and it's tricky because it is a Sanskrit word, right? And so, so many of us, I mean, I'm from the Midwest. You know, I'm here in Chicago, and uh, boy, when I when I heard it, I didn't even know like, is this correct? But it is. It's Akashic, um, and I know some people say Akashic. It, it doesn't really matter, but um, but I say Akashic. And um, what it is now? It's interesting. Akasha is a Sanskrit word, and what it means is primary substance, that from which all things are formed. And so what we're talking about with the Akashic Record is a vibrational archive, right, or collection, if you will, of every soul and their journey, every soul in existence and their journey. So, so that's, in the most general terms, that's what the record is, um, and everyone's records, like your records, my records, every individual record has 
two components. The first is like, um, for a long time, I really have understood this as the blueprint of your soul. Okay, and you get that at the at the point when the inception of the soul. You know, I've come to understand it almost like the thumbprint of God, right, on each individual soul that says, this is the soul of Sylvia. And and one day, Sylvia, on her human journey, Sylvia will wake up and realize who she really is and begin to live in that truth. So there is, but that never changes. The blueprint doesn't change. And then there's a part of the record that is is evolving and changing, and that is is fascinating because it is the the um, the collection of the stories of the lifetimes you live through which you awaken to your potential and actually live it here on Earth. So we have it's like the Chronicles of Sylvia. That's the way I would, right? That's what we would say. Because it's, we've got the, the imprint and then the expression of it. So, so there are two parts and everybody's in the records. Okay? Which is, which is good. So we're That's all a fantastic. part of it. So, and I yeah. love that, that it's, there's that blueprint, that perfect blueprint that is all about realizing who we really are and then mm-hmm that it is our destiny to live our life from that point of view and that perspective. Well, that is, from an Akashic perspective, that is really, that's what the game of life is all about, right? Is Mm -hmm. that, you know, when we don't have bodies and, you know, bills to pay, car payments, mortgages, you know, you know, health issues, you know, when, when we are, um, light beings, it's very easy to know the truth about ourselves. You know, we're floating around. We're one with the oneness. It's, it's a great time. Then we come to the planet, and it's like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Did somebody change the rules, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment when we return more with Linda Howe, and we're going to dig deep into her wealth of wisdom about the Akashic Records. So please stay tuned for more. We'll be back in just a few moments. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes I did the same things over and over, until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone, to Intuitive Transformations on OMTimes.com. This is Sylvia Henderson with her wonderful guest, Dr. Linda Howe, and we're talking about her brand new book, Healing Through the Akashic Records, Using the Power of Your Sacred Wounds to Discover Your Soul's Perfection. And before we went into the break, um, Dr. Howe was just sharing about um, the Akashic Records being two components that there is uh, one section all about the stories that we've collected over many, many lifetimes throughout our journey as, as a soul, as a, as a 
eternal being of light, and then also another component, which is a, a blueprint of um, what I would call almost perfection, where we get to realize who mm-hmm. we really are and what we came here to do and live from that point of view. And so, Dr. How, how did you first get introduced to the Akashic Records and then go on to create this amazing process called the Pathway Prayer Process, which then allows, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone to be able to access the Akashic Records who would like to. Do you know, uh, you know, Celia, so this is so, it's a great question, right? Uh, because this isn't something in my ordinary thinking that, you know, it's not like we can plan for these things. <laughs> This, okay, so let's start there. But what was? Here's how this happened. Um, so when I was 24 years old, um, after you know, after doing everything I thought I was supposed to do, I woke up at 24, had everything I thought I wanted, and was devastatingly unhappy, and prayed, and was um, met within a short period of time by a profound and really life changing experience of being touched by the light as i know many many people have this is the time in human evolution for that this experience for me was so um i don't i i just i was captivated and i thought whatever this is i have to have it and i launched out on my journey and i did everything i spent from 24 to 40 really looking for um, uh, some kind of a way to reignite that experience I had, right? And and everything was good. Don't get me, you know, everything was, but, but nothing was quite it. And when I was 40 years old, I was, um, I was speaking about um, shamanism. I was on a panel, and there was a woman who mentioned the Akashic Records. Now, I have to tell you, when she said the word, it went through me like um, like lightning. I just thought, whatever this is, I must go, and I did. And I I went to her class, and I opened. I followed the instructions. It was uh, it was using a prayer, different prayer than I use today, but it was using a prayer. And when I opened the records, the experience was the most. It was the closest to what I encountered at 24 um, because I had this sense in the records of being completely known, almost like I was transparent, right? Known, but totally accepted, loved, cherished. And I thought, this is it? I, it, it just it took my breath away. Now, when I first, it was in 1994, when I first started doing this, I had no idea where it was going, Sylvia. I mean, but I knew that this was, for me, a space. It was such a sanctuary of purity, of acceptance, and um, safety, so that I could explore my personal issues, which this is really where the work has um, emerged. So first I thought, oh, I've got the method, right? This, what, you know, um, in, in 2001, I was given the pathway prayer process, which is the access that I use today and I've taught. Actually, I'm teaching internationally at this point, bringing this work to students in, in um, you know, all kinds of languages all over the globe. And so anyone who wants it can connect with the records in this way. It is a conscious responsible, honorable way to engage the record as a spiritual practice, right? Because it's a lousy source of divination. It's a great spiritual practice, though. Anyway, so what what happened is that I've, I used the records and, and continue to do so in my own personal journey, right? So, so the first thing is the method, and that was my first book, you know, how to read the Akashic Records. And I thought, here's what I thought. I thought, oh, I've got the method. I'm done. It's really what I thought. Well, lo and behold, life keeps going. And the next piece of the puzzle 
for me was, of course, my personal healing. And I realized, and that's where the book that we're talking about today, you know, healing through the records, which is interesting because it's not healing by the records, but it's a space within which we can have a transformation in our relationship with the wounds we've suffered and embrace our potential, our potential perfection. So it, it's really, it, it's very exciting. Um, so after the personal, then came the third book, right, which is um, the, To Discover the Soul's Path, which is about, it really addresses the question, how do I maintain my spiritual awareness while I participate in the world? And we see this happening now in the collective, you know, in these times of great political, economic, I mean, change at every level of, of society, you know, whether it's here in America or anywhere. I mean, we see it in Europe. We see it all over the world. There is dramatic change, and we see people um you know, connecting with their own spiritual authority and then taking action. Uh, very, very exciting. It is unprecedented in human history, certainly for women, um, to to have this awareness of their own authority and to act in such, you know, great ways in the world. Just thrilling. Anyway, and actually, and right now, I'm working, now I'm working on my, my fourth book, which is about um, bringing your soul's purposes to life. So it's just, you know, the work that has come, it has not, you know, it's not like I just sit down and channel books, and I really envy people who do. I don't. For me, it's a whole process of, of um, receive, you know, bringing my personal concerns to my own records, Right, and then receiving guidance, applying the guidance, road testing it, doing classes with people, learning like what what works. So it's a real, it's a real, uh, it's a, a comprehensive uh, path of growth and transformation. Does that answer your question? <laughs> It absolutely does. Well, because, you know, as consciousness expands, it opens the door for us to receive more insight, more information. And I'm so grateful that you've answered the clarion call, so to speak, and have continued to bring forth this information so that everyone can have access to this. Because as we Mm -hmm. are going through all of these changes, the things of the third dimensional realm, this world, don't work very well anymore and we need to step into that truth of our spiritual uh, light and and really who we are and uh, what's possible through the um, Akashic Records. So this book really focuses on your sacred wounds. So what are sacred wounds? How do we create them? Okay. And how can we... Okay, okay. So this is, okay, this is, I, this is a very exciting um, topic area for me personally ongoing right ongoing so here's what, what I realized for myself and certainly for all my friends you know we're all wounded and at first I thought you know and a wound is like okay we all have experiences in life that cause us dis- you know we, get, we, we bump up against each other human beings have been wounding one another you know and ourselves since we stood up on two feet wounds are not new but what's fascinating is in the record. So wounds are injuries we've sustained. The old paradigm is that we would use these wounds to as evidence of our unworthiness. Maybe that we were either sinners or unenlightened, but that's what we would do with them. Working in the records, we discover the first of all, Wounds are not, you know, I mean, while we all have our personal experience of wounding, wounding itself is common to humanity, okay? But Mm -hmm. there is a higher spiritual purpose for a wound. So rather than using it as a weapon against ourselves, we have the opportunity to use it as a portal to grow into uh, um, the uh, practice of unconditional self-love and the ex- experience of connection with the divine reality. So working in the records, we never change the past. You can't change the past, 
but we see in the records that there's value in the past. Um, but though our, what we transform is our relationship to the wounds we have. So we stop using um, our wounds and injuries against ourselves, and we use them uh, for a higher spiritual purpose, and that is to grow into greater love and compassion and understanding of ourselves. And that is like, oh, my heavens, I was not expecting that when I started working on this, right? You know, when you said that, transform our relationship to the past, I got chills and my eyes started to water because that's the most beautiful thing we can possibly do. It really is that that misinterpretation of the past, that having that past still have its hold on us because we haven't been able to transform the relationship in terms of using it against us, as you've already pointed out, as a weapon mm-hmm. against us to validate our unworthiness. But I love how we can use it as a porthole to experience our light. That is fantastic. And that is, like, if we look at why is it that everyone has a wound. Everyone has wounds of of so many varieties. You know, the bad childhood, terrible things happen to people. Terrible. I mean, you know, you work with people, you hear one hair-raising story after another. And you think, well, what could this possibly be for? Like, why would we have this, right? And, And really, working in the records, we come to see that everything, everyone is always doing their best. And we, every experience we have is an opportunity to really extend unconditional love to ourselves. Uh, you know, can I love myself even though my parents treated me terribly? Can I love myself even though I just, you know, I, whatever I did, you know, I had a bad marriage, my health is failing. Can I love myself even though I'm perfect, imperfect, okay, as a human being? And that is the question that we really need to step into more. That is, I love that. We'll be back in just a few moments with more with Dr. Uh, Linda Howe talking about the Akashic Records. So stay tuned and we'll be back in just a moment. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hey, let me ask you something. Would you seat your three-year-old child on a windowsill? Would you seat them beside a lit fireplace or by the deep end of a pool? One last question. Would you seat your child in a car seat that's not correct for them? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Secure their future. Seat them in the correct car seat. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Um, Dr. Linda Howe, so in your book, you talk about resentment. And I love how we're talking about the sacred wound and why, you know, that everyone is doing their best. But yet resentment 
uh, especially now, <laughs> today, uh-huh. is, is mm-hmm. pretty palpable. I mean, how is it possible for us to move from resentment to forgiveness? And how can we do that, especially given the state of affairs in the United States and all the contention and controversy surrounding the new president and his administration? Um, as I said, the vibration of resentment is palpable. It's so thick, you can almost feel it. It's everywhere. You can't get away from it, especially as we're moving into the inauguration tomorrow. It's everywhere. People are even resentful that people are resentful. <laughs> so this is really an important energy or issue for us to address. <laughs> and so, it's so funny, Sylvia, but you're so, yes, that's true. <laughs> it is, it's true. They're resentful that we're, you know, people are resentful. Yes. And so it's affecting yes. everyone. And so from your point of view and from your seasoned experience in working with the Akashic Records and and you've taught so many different classes. Is it possible when there is so much of such a heavy discordant energy like resentment found within the collective consciousness of humanity to somehow move from that energy of resentment into forgiveness um, through the Akashic Records um, on, a, on a broader scale than individual? Okay, than okay, this is, this is a great question, Sylvia. This is great, okay. So here's how this goes. So the first thing we want to understand is that um, this is a time of visionary awareness, right? So, so like as you're talking, you're like, well, we've got like this, the collective, you know, we're all caught in this madness right now. And, and we look and it's like, what do we do about the collective? And, but the energetic um, power, where our power is, is within us. And there is no collective. The collective, the collective is each individual. It's almost like we stand as these individual pillars of light. And the only way to have any impact on this thing called the collective is to be transformed within ourselves individually. Okay? So what that means is we, and because I'll tell you what, I've actually been working with this. Right, and I'm a person, I don't like conflict, right? So this whole thing, I mean, I want to crawl under the covers over what's happening in the world. I'm like, oh my God, it's too much conflict. Okay, so here's the first thing, okay? I have to understand that what I can do for the whole is to work within myself to find peace, okay? It has, how, so here's how this goes. How do I love myself? even though I am so mad my hair is on fire. Okay, because see, I have a judgment about resentment. I think it's a lower, I think it's, it's like a lower vibration, it's negative, I should get away from it. But the fact is, it's very human. And if I judge it negatively, it's going to be, you know, whatever we resist persists. Very simple law, right? So I, it has to be okay with me that I'm mad as sin, okay? So that means I have to stop judging myself and make room for myself as an imperfect human being. As I do that, the resentment begins to move, okay? Then I look out into the world, and it has to be okay with me. Now, I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but I want to say, you know what, it's okay if everybody's fighting mad, right? It's okay. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. And it's all right. Okay? So the other thing I want to begin to look at is I also, I know in myself, I have a great negative judgment like about being a victim. I don't want to be a victim. Oh, that just like makes me like, oh, right? Okay, and none of us want to be victims. Nobody. And so, but the question becomes, can I, because see, I feel like part of this, especially, you know, with this whole election and everything that's going down, it's like, oh, my God, I've been conned, I've been hoodwinked. How do I love myself even though I feel like I've been a victim here? Okay. How, not, I'm not worried about loving anybody else at this point and I don't think and I don't think part of it too is accepting the fact of the matter is that 
this particular man is in office at this time because he is representative of all the, he's like a conglomerate of all the old ideas. Okay? He really is. He's actually a caricature of every old idea that we're all trying to get away from. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God, this guy's a walking, talking, right, old idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, I don't have to love him. I don't have to like him. But I do have to recognize that how do I love myself in his presence? What we see, it's interesting because this is the year of um in in my school, right, in my work, it's the year of appropriate action, right? Akashic inspired appropriate action. And so it's also interesting there's a lot of action in the world, it all works together. So when I look and I say, What can I do today? Do we we really need to be in the present as much as possible. Hold the vision. See, people who know that we're one are are mm-hmm. we are the ones who can make a difference, right? Because we're up mm-hmm. against those who believe that we're all separate and fragmented and those who know that we're one. Operating within the oneness, we have to include people that we don't understand, who don't make sense. Now I'm not saying we have to you know, I don't know, bow down to them, but we have to know there has to be a seat at the table for them. Even though, because I'll tell you something, here's what I noticed, and I got this in the records, right? Because I'm like, oh my God, look at this guy, right? Um, He's going to destroy everything. What's going on? And what I get in my records is one of the primary assumptions is that everyone is always doing their best. So what I get is that this, the man who is now, he's our president-elect, this man in his heart of hearts believes that what he is doing is for the highest good of all. He did not wake up and say, let me destroy everyone's lives. He's not saying that. The thing is, his idea of how to improve everything is radically different than the majority of people in America. And to I understand that, that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I don't. I don't think anyone would argue that point. <laughs> right. I mean, it just is like whoa. But see, that is. So we see the great tyrants throughout history, whether it's Donald Trump or Joseph Stalin, or I mean, we go on and on forever. I mean, a lot of tyrants and bullies out there. But the fact of the matter is, if we put them all in a room and said, what is your purpose? Their purpose would have been, they would all say the same thing. I want to, first of all, of course, they want to leave their mark on the world. But the other thing is, they want to transform their nation. Okay? And and the ways they have to do it are just, I mean, are they brutal? Yes. So... So these times, I mean, it's an interesting thing. We have to, like what I've also gotten, like there's the big distinction between like surrender and resignation. I have to accept this guy is really president. He's really going to be president and everything that goes with that. Now, if I surrender to that, I what that means is I accept it in the in. in and I understand that the world, that people are essentially good, and the world is a basically a good place. So there's hope. There's hope in surrender, positive hope. I'm surrendering to something better. If I resign myself and say, this guy's president, I'm going to go hide for the next four years, right? Then what I'm doing is I am giving up. I am giving up into fear. Resignation is fear-based. So so our opportunity is to surrender to the presenting reality, right? And that is leaning into, like, what is, so what can I actually do today? Because this is, even though we have visionary awareness, the action takes place today. What can I do today about this? And that's what we all have to ask ourselves. And, you know, it's such an interesting thing because everybody has different talents and abilities. And 
boy, if everyone just does what they can do, this is where the transformation, this is the rise of the feminine principle at work, right? Because it's not just one person, it's everyone. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I really loved throughout your books, and especially this one, is the thread of your use of the power of inquiry. It really is about asking the right questions um, and, and asking that question of, how is this good for me? is huge because that opens up instead of resisting, <laughs> oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, which is resisting. When you ask the question, how is this good for me? It opens up the possibilities and the potentialities of a different point of view and being able to be led by your guidance to take those appropriate steps and make appropriate choices. Right. So, this is, and you know, I talk about it, this is the turbocharged healing question. Whenever we face anything that's just like so, like, oh my God, this is awful. Whether it's a sick child, a, you know, a, a runaway spouse, a, you know, the loss of a job. The question is, see, we are creatures at the soul level. We love ourselves. We only allow into our experience those events that empower our ability to love ourselves more, okay? We are not out to sabotage or, you know, I don't know, punch ourselves in the nose. That's not, we, that is not who we are. So when something goes, when we encounter difficulty, which we all do, it's the human journey, Okay, when we do, the question is, how, how can this help me to love myself? See, why, how is this good for me? How, because you wouldn't have it, okay, unless, I mean, and I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a bad childhood. I would not have a bad childhood unless it were somehow the best way for me to come to love myself. I would not have a lousy job and a mean boss. You know, we talk to people, all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, you know, I wouldn't be sick with the flu unless at the time it was the best I could do. Like no one ever gets up and says, oh, you know, my life is, I, I'm going to have a lousy life today. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, no, no. And I totally understand what you're saying, Linda. And so when we return after the break, we're going to talk more about how you can heal through the Akashic Records with Linda Howe. Great. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Did you just look down at your phone? You did it again, didn't you? You know, you're flying down the road in a three-ton hunk of steel, and the text takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. At 55 miles per hour, that's long enough to travel the length of a football field and cause some serious damage. Turn it off. Trust me. Whatever it is, you'll live. Learn more at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Well, we're back. I cannot believe that we are toward the end of the show already, the last segment of the show. Dr. Linda Howe, how can people get in contact with you, sign up for your classes, your workshops, and get your new book, Healing Through the Akashic Records, Using the Power of Your Sacred Wounds to Discover Your Soul's Perfection? All right. Oh, so, so the easiest way to find me is, of course, through my website, which is lindahow.com. Okay, so you can go there. I do, actually, I'm, the books, um, 
the healing book in paper, I'm so happy it's finally in paperback, right? And it's revised and it's it's easier to it's easier to read, it's easier to work with, right? And I think I think people will find that. Uh that's what people have been saying already. So the way to get the book is you know, you can go to Amazon and but you can also go and my website will take you there, right? And you can get you can get my books. Um so that's that's good. You can also go to Sounds True, um, a, you know, for the healing book. Um, now, what's happening with classes that's really, really great is I'm working with a platform now. We're doing um, interactive video classes. Uh, right now I'm doing Soul's Path. In April I'll be doing manifesting based on my latest material, bringing your soul's purposes to life. And that's really nice because people everywhere can, and it's interactive video and wherever you are. I mean, you understand, it's really a great way to go. Um, but I, in actually in July in Chicago, I'm going to be doing an in-person class on the inner and outer aspects of healing. And we will be, based on this book, and we will be exploring um, some of the ways we can use our personal healing and transformation to facilitate healing and transformation in our communities. Because as you, I just think it's so synchronistic, Sylvia, as you've been talking about, you know, the events that, the stew that we're in in the world, but we really are. And so I'm actually going to be doing a class. Um, it's my only in-person class in the, um, in the United States this year, 2017. So uh, I just want to let people know about it and please come and, and it'll be really wonderful. Um, and ever, whatever level you're at, you know, if you're new to the records, if you've been working in the records, it doesn't, the records will meet you where you are, right? And, and you can come into it and once you, once you're like, um, uh, I, I want to say you, you step into it, you begin to follow the instructions and, and work with the pathway prayer process as it's, um, Whatever you know, as it's outlined, what will happen is your own relationship with your soul. See, the record is the archive of the soul, and working in the record is a way to have a more conscious connection with your soul, right? And it's interesting because everybody that comes to the classes and people that I work with, they get into the, you know, we follow, we learn the pathway prayer. It's very simple. Um, you follow the instructions. Uh, what people say is, oh, this, I know this. See, it's very familiar to us. Mm. So uh, we're not connecting you to something new or weird or outlandish. What we're doing is is providing the pathway prayer process provides a deliberate, responsible, intentional um, safe access to have a more conscious connection with your soul. Um, and, you know, anybody who, who like, hears this, they're like, oh, I have to check this out. That's the hint. That's the hint from the universe. That's the clue. Like, you can do this. Um, so, uh, but but it's important to... You know, a lot of people come to this, they have great natural talent, but you do, don't deprive yourself of good training, okay? Let yourself get the training you need, because once you have it, you're good, right? It's like you, you want to go to driver's ed classes and learn how to drive a car. Once you know how, you can get in the car whenever you need it. It's the same principle with the records. Once you get yourself trained, you're good, Sometimes people say to me, what's all this? Why do I need to be trained? Blah, blah. But, but the fact is we are the first generation in history to have the opportunity to work in our records this way. Like in the last century, there was Edgar Cayce. But, you know, he was unconscious, and he could not teach anybody else how to do what he was doing. So the the access the availability of the record has changed dramatically in the last sixty five years, and and it's a funny thing like uh, our predecessors I mean certainly my parents or your parents you know our parents didn't know how to do this 
But I'll tell you something, our children won't have any, you know, people won't be taking classes in these things in 50 years or even less, probably 20, right, 25 years. Everybody will be like, oh, well, that's common knowledge. But see, we, have a resp- we are the bridge generation, and we have a responsibility to equip ourselves to make great use of the spiritual resources that are being given to us to navigate these times of exceptional change, exceptional dramatic change here on the planet. So come to class. Come to class. It's it's really fun. We have we have a lot of fun. And you know the other thing I want to say, Sylvia. Sometimes people get very worried. Like they say to me, you know, I'm not psychic. And I say, well, that's good because you don't have to be psychic. Having a more conscious relationship with your soul does not mm-hmm. require psychic ability. I don't. Care. You don't have to see auras. You don't even have to know what a chakra is. None of that matters. This is the Akashic record is the energetic connective tissue between the soul and the source. And it holds us steady as we awaken to the truth of who we are and begin to live in that truth while we are still in human form. This has nothing to do with being psychic. So don't worry about that, right? Don't keep yourself away from a deep spiritual um, inner life and and powerful expression in the world because you don't think you're psychic. It just does. I don't know where we got the idea that that being psychic was particularly spiritual. I I really don't know where that idea came from because it really doesn't make any sense. You know, anyway, but I think it's fascinating. Anyway, these are the these are the things. I hope this is anyway, here you have it. That is wonderful. And you're right, I don't you don't have to be psychic. This is you know, and honestly, to be quite honest, I'll let you in on a little secret. Everybody's psychic. You know, everybody is psychic. Well, see, that's the thing. Everybody is and it's like it's it's just like wait a second, right? It's like anyway, it just is but see we get diverted. See, that's, developing psychic ability, I don't think that's the point. I really understand that, as I understand it, the point is to have a more conscious awareness of the fact that we are one within ourselves, we are one with every other human being, and we are one with the divine. That is the point. See, and we're not here to, like, be perfect, get perfect. We are here to be useful, right? So the point of the spiritual quest is not to be perfect. The point is is really to be open to love and care for ourselves and others, even though, as human beings, we're not perfect, and I don't know about you, Sylvia, I cannot wait. I really, I thought, I thought, oh, I'll get spiritual, then I'll get perfect, and then I'll participate in life. But see, what I learned in the records is, <laughs> you can't wait. <laughs> don't wait. Don't wait. That what matters is, am I willing to participate in life even though I am really an imperfect human being? That so huge. is spiritual wisdom at work. Absolutely. I love how you said earlier in the show, make room for yourself to be imperfect. And in your book, you point out that the absolutes of the Akasha is to judge not, fear not, and resist not. And that really is all, that to me is unconditional love. Yes. It is all allowing. Yes. Yes. And you know what? The opportunity in the record is to shift from the idea of unconditional love, which we're all grappling with that, right? It's a new Mm -hmm. idea in the collective. But we're Mm -hmm. shifting from the idea of unconditional love to what does it mean in reality. And I know in my work in the records, over and over, a million bazillion times, the message is get with yourself. It's okay. How do I not abandon myself in yes. those times of imperfection, <laughs> right? Can I extend to myself the kindness 
the respect, the understanding and compassion when I need it, right? Can I do that even when I'm tripping and falling through life? That is unconditional love. And as we extend that to ourselves, we come to know the love of the divine. And and what happens, the power of the love is such that the more the more we are kind and um, understanding, patient to ourselves, the faster our imperfections fall away. Because all the imperfections are rooted in fear of criticism. So. Oh, my God, you hit the nail on the head with that one, Linda. <laughs> mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Absolutely, 110%. We are so afraid of that, that judgment. That's why judgment, yeah. fear not, resist not. The, the so fear important. of the judgment, we get paralyzed. Exactly. Right. It's not we even really the judgment do. itself. It's the fear of the judgment. <laughs> right. It really is. And so now we're like everything's in like emotional lockdown. Right. Oh, it's like yeah. oh. And you know what? In what I've really gotten in the records, you know, it's like if it was helpful to be so hard on yourself, that would be fine. But mm. the person after person myself, you, all of us, what we all find is that the only way to transform and grow is through a a relationship of kindness and respect. That is so true. Dr. Linda Howe, thank you so very much for joining us today. This has been a beautiful show, and I really want to encourage all of you listening to um, go to her website. It's L I N D A H O W E dot com, Linda Howe. Get her book, Healing Through the Economy. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> bye bye.